Well, hello everyone. This is your friendly rheumatologist at Unabridged MD. And today is another episode of Unabridged MD. And I am so excited to introduce Dr. Heather Awad. She is a primary care physician, but also a specialist in obesity. And we are gonna deep dive into what it means to try to lose weight after you are menopause. So this is an episode that is not only for women that are menopause, but also I think for everyone that will at one point either have to deal with it personally, but also have to deal with it because maybe your wife or your partner has this issue. So share, and I think we are in for a treat. Um, and I'm going to have Dr. Heather Awad on the podcast right now. Hi, Dr. Awad. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm thrilled to be having this conversation. Absolutely. So tell us about you and how did you uh, come to do the work that you're doing? Sure. Well, I'm a family doctor, as you said, in primary care, and I've always been interested in lifestyle and eating well to make ourselves feel better and have a, have better health. Um, I wasn't always good at helping people lose weight, though, as a primary care doctor. And then in my own life, in my late 40s, all of a sudden, I just started to gain a bunch of weight without really changing anything. And I couldn't figure out what it was. And I tried many things. And you know, I did some yo-yo dieting. Sometimes I could really work hard and get down and then, but then it would pop back up again and then the weight would go higher. And even though I was eating healthy, I just watched this number go up and then I was into a range that was definitely unhealthy. And then I got really worried and I thought I have to figure this out. So I did a lot of research on perimenopause, menopause, the weight gain that comes at this time, the weight gain, the belly weight gain. Um, and figured out that a lot of this relates mostly to insulin resistance at this age. But then I also did some coaching because I had a hard time stress eating, um, you know, eating when I was super excited, eating when I was super sad, you know, all those things. And so kind of getting some coaching around not eating when it was just about feelings and not about hunger, that helped as well. And so I just wanted to share that with people because I think a lot of people at the age, you know, when they get to their late forties and move on beyond, it, it all of a sudden becomes a mystery how to lose weight. Yeah, that is so true. Um, and I reached out to you because I, that's the issue I have. So I think I want to share this with uh, our auditors because I think this podcast is actually quite personal, but also it just shows that it can happen to anyone, right? So mm -hmm. for me, I had to remove my ovaries, like Angelina Jolie. <laughs> <laughs> I love that ex that I comparison, and it's exactly what happened to me. I mean, literally, I was just like, "Why?" I mean, um, like at one point, I was just like, "Hold on, I'm actually not eating that much. I'm exercising just the same way. Like, what's going on?" And of course, I knew, you know, like theoretically, you're like, "Yeah, of course." When you're in the menopause, you can, like, you know, because you see it around you, right? Like that people right. do gain weight. Um, but I reached out to you and then you taught me something that I was like, whoa, of course that makes sense. Can you tell us about the insulin, when you've mentioned insulin resistance, can you explain to us what this means uh, and why this is such an issue when you become menopause? Sure. So when, when we eat, our body turns everything we eat into glucose. And so we get this little glucose, our blood sugar, you know, the glucose goes up in our body. And in order for our body to take it in and use that for energy, insulin comes in and pulls that out into the cells and the muscles so we can use it for energy. Now, if we eat often, which happens in our culture, then we have insulin around often to pull that glucose out. And the more it's there, it's kind of like being in a loud room where someone talks, comes up and says, hey there, guess what? You don't necessarily hear them very well because there's a loud room. Well, this happens with our hormones as well. They don't like the loud room. So they're having a hard time. There's insulin around, but the insulin is having a harder time pulling everything out. And so the body says, there's still a lot of glucose around. We need more insulin. So the body becomes resistant, just like you do to sound in a loud room, becomes resistant to the hormone insulin. And so it's keeps sending more and more and more. 
Now the problem is, is that insulin is also our fat storage hormone. And so the, if we have high levels around all the time, we will always be in fat storage mode and never doing the natural thing where we use some of our fat for fuel. So the thing is, when you get into your 40s, or if you have a surgery that removes your ovaries, as your estrogen drops, and this can be, you know, kind of a crazy line or, or a real fast drop with surgery, then you have a natural increase in insulin resistance as well. That's just noted. It's, it's multiple organs are involved with this. It's not very well understood. So it's really an important thing to pay attention to at this age or at menopause. Okay. That's really interesting. So after men, so everyone goes through this insulin, uh, th there is like insulin and there's this risk of insulin resistance. But what you're saying is that people who have menopause, like women who are undergoing menopause, they have m more risk of that. Right, right. Okay. And also even if you wait, you know, if, if you have a surgical menopause, you're going to get this bumped. But if you, but if it doesn't happen until your 40s or 50s, you still have many years of this kind of loud room thing going on. So you have some insulin resistance. And then when the estrogen goes down, you get another bump. So you have like the perfect storm. Mm -hmm. And that's also why a lot of um, things that worked for you, maybe when you're in your 20s and 30s to lose weight, don't work yeah. as well anymore. And, we see that. and I think that that's something that everyone's, like every person that's trying to lose weight sees. Um, okay. So, so we have learned about the insulin resistance, the fact that hormone changes can increase at that risk. Now, what can we do? What can we do to make sure? So, and, and I'm, I'm talking not about the stress eating and all this. I think that yeah. um, we, I want to talk about this as well, but like in that verb of like, how can we make sure that the insulin resistance doesn't become such a problem? Sure, sure. And some people that I work with don't have, those issues of stress eating either. So it's, it becomes very simple for them. So if you think about it, in the late 60s, um, a grandma would tell their kids, don't snack. This is how you have a healthy body. Don't snack. But we, we live in a culture that snacks all the time now, right? But if we change that and have some time in between when we eat where nothing happens, where we're not putting anything in our mouths except for water, um, then we have time for our glucose and insulin to come up and go down again and be quiet. Now, the thing that's great about that is you think about if you're sitting in a quiet room, you're not in a loud airport and someone comes up and says, Hey, I want to tell you something. You're like, Oh, you know, you hear it. It's loud. It sounds really loud. Right. And that's what we want our hormones to do. So we want it to be quiet where there's nothing going on with our digestive hormones and then we eat something and insulin comes in and is that little voice that says, Hey, I want to tell you something. And then the cells are like, ah, insulin, let in the, let in the energy. So if we can leave some space of time in between our meals, three to six hours, then, then our hormones are working naturally. So then the, so then you eat and the blood sugar comes up and the insulin will clear it out. And then things get really quiet for a while. And, the digestive system is not talking, it's quiet. And then the thing is that naturally then, if there's no eating going on, your body will just pull from fat because it's made to do that for energy because there's nothing going on. And then you eat again and there's blood sugar and the insulin comes in and it gets pulled in and it gets used and it's fine. And then it should get quiet again. And the body will say, oh, it's quiet now. We'll just pull fat for energy. And honestly, people, this is in the late sixties when we had people that mostly did this, we did not have an obesity epidemic. And there are some other things that go with it, but this is really very important and really fixes things for women in menopause and beyond. I think this is such a powerful, so, you know, I just, I want to share what, because you taught me this and mm -hmm. I started implementing it and it took me, gosh, it took me a long time and it took me you to realize that, hold on, that coffee and latte that I'm drinking for like a full two hours is actually not allowing that. Right, right. So the things that you can have that don't activate your 
digestive system are water um, or, you know, some of the sparkling waters, if they don't have juice in them, they are fine. Plain coffee, plain tea, but nothing in them at all. Yeah, those are those are fine in between. But otherwise, yes, if you have some milk or some sugar or anything in those, then the, then the digestive system has to work. Yeah, and I, and I think that that's like really interesting. I have a uh, one of my trainer, like a physical uh, trainer, mm -hmm. uh, that was always telling me that they've done looked at studies about exercise, and it's actually not the big exercise that allows you to uh, get healthy and strong and all this. It's literally every single little thing that you do in life. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you take a a bike to go to work, even if the work is maybe two minutes away, if you take the stairs and it's all of those little things. And what I'm learning with you is how all of those little things that I'm potentially I'm doing and that wasn't a problem before, but is now a problem. Yes. Uh, and so it's really cool. I, I, I want to just share my own experience, which is like, it's really, really cool to see, oh, wow. Yeah. This is like a habit I have. It's just a habit. Like I can change that habit. Like yeah. I can be healthier and change that habit. Okay. So we've talked about insulin resistance. We've talked about um, how to make sure that uh, our body, our our bodies are like listen, like that our hormones are able to do their job by being in this quiet room. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about mindful eating and all of those things that you're saying about like stress and maybe how we eat stress sure. and. It's so easy. I mean, there are cookies everywhere. Yes, <laughs> like, yes. They're good. <laughs> yeah, it is hard. You know, the any eating that you do when you're not hungry is some sort of emotional or stress eating, you know, even if it's just for entertainment. So if you want to lose weight, you want to eat when you're hungry. And I understand that sometimes we have to eat on a schedule and that's okay. You can, you can eat your three meals if you, if that's a, a good schedule for you. Um, but in between the question is, am I hungry? You know, because if you're not, then, then you don't want to have those things. Or if you're feeling a craving, go ahead and sit and examine that craving and say, what is going on? Maybe it's because you're in the break room at work and there's always cookies and you're like the cookie table. I always think, I always look at them and I think I want that. So there's always the craving from that. And sometimes just sitting with that craving and thinking, am I, you know, is something going on with me? Maybe you're mad about something. So you can say, I'm, I'm mad. Maybe nothing's going on with you and it's just that it's there. But you can just notice that it's uncomfortable. You can sit there and be uncomfortable with it. You don't have to eat it. And you can actually just sit there and notice that these feelings don't last long. You'll have a strong, intense craving. And then if you just sit with it, you'll watch it fade out. And you'll also notice that you don't die from those cravings. Because <laughs> our brain gives us that feeling like, well, I, that's the really good cookie. Like it's really an emergency. And then if you just sit with the craving, sometimes you're like, ah, I didn't die from that feeling. It, it turned out it wasn't an emergency, even though it's a really good cookie. Does that make sense? <laughs> It does. Yeah, I know. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, I think I think we can all be proud once we do this and we're like, yeah, this is, you know, it's OK. I can survive this. Uh, I've definitely been in that situation where everyone is getting an ice cream and I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not for me or, you know, something like this. Um, all right. This has been such a wonderful uh, interview. I, I think that there's so many actionable uh, steps here that our auditors can take. Um, I wonder if you could tell us um, a history of hope, because that's what the show is about, hope driven by science. Yeah. Well, I have many clients, but I'll tell you about one. She's a 65-year-old business owner. She has not retired. She's still going strong. Uh, she and her husband survey land around Chicago, and she um, had just given up and she just said, you know, I tried to lose weight and I just figured I see a lot of people my age who are overweight and I thought I just can't, you know, uh, it turns out you can't lose weight at this age. You're just stuck, stuck being overweight. And she did this. She moved to three meals without snacks and um, cut back on some of the sugar she was eating. And without ever being hungry, she just lost weight easily. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Never yeah. give up. If you want something, just try to find the right person to help you. Right. Um, yeah. I absolutely love this. And where can we find you, Dr. Awad? Sure. You can look at me up at heatherawadmd.com. And also you can look up my name on social media uh, sites as well. But that's my website. Okay, that's excellent. Well, thank you so much. So I, I really appreciate uh, you coming onto the show. Um, and then for our auditors, look under, share this episode if you think that it has helped you. I, I can I can attest as a client, a doctor, that I absolutely adore what she does. So I highly recommend it. Um, and and I'm not 50. <laughs> <That's> right, right. <laughs> when I saw this, I was like, hold on. <laughs> right, right. But it does work for me because I am menopause. Yeah, menopause. menopause. Um, and um, so if you're looking for someone to help you lose that extra weight and, and just be healthy. And I think that that's, that's what I came to you. I was like, hey, I want to stay healthy because overweight is clearly associated with breast cancer recurrence, with diabetes, with right. so uh, inflammatory arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis. So um, I'm a big proponent of making sure that we have healthy bodies uh, for, you know, all of my patients. Um, and then I'm going to just finish this. Uh, if you're looking for a rheumatologist in the Denver and Colorado area, I'm the first rheumatology um, in direct care. So I don't contract with insurance. You can get an appointment right away. And I would love to see you. Well, uh, let's see each other next week. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.